I'm doing good, and we're hopping right into the uh, picks and bans for today of Team Summon versus Exertus Zeal. So, yeah, uh, it's going to be a fun night tonight as uh, the bans and picks are going to get underway. You're muted, dude. On stream. <laughs> ah, man. Every single time, there's like five things to unmute, and I always forget that one. I had a cool intro and everything, but that's okay. Welcome to the Mobile Fire <laughs> Challenger series. We are here. I am unmuted. You can hopefully hear me. You're good. All You're right. All good. All right. Good. We good. And yeah, Team Summon versus Exertus. Team Summon, the team that has Locust, the team that formerly um, was going to compete in the LCS. They tried to make it through relegations, could not defeat Dignitas, though. Now here they are still fighting for their, you know, tournament esports lives. Yep, and on the other side we're going to have Exertus Zeal. Going to be going to look at some. The, the bands are finally done, though. We're going to have Rise, Jace, and Twisted Fate band out for Team Summon. And then on the side of Exodus Seal, Nunu, Evelyn, and Thresh. And I think that Evelyn is targeted towards Re because he was a fairly proficient uh, Evelyn player during Season 2. Yeah, it was, he was pretty dominating on that Evelyn. E Evelyn's one of those characters where if you have that one player who can put, put her in any role, you know... There's been occasional top lane Evelyn's. That's the rare one, but either mid or jungle, she can just dominate a game so quickly. She's someone who can snowball out of control, but because of her percentage damage on the ultimate, even if she doesn't snowball, she's still pretty relevant. Yeah, and we're going to see Elise get first picked for the side of Team Summon, so we're going to be fairly strong with that one. Could be support, could go top, could jungle. We'll see where that goes. While well, we have Nami and Zack being picked up for Exerted Seal. Most likely support Nami. And Zach could go top or jungle. We've seen him go everywhere lately. Yeah, Zach's just, he's been all over the place, both uh, as a role and as a, a character in general. You put him on the map. It's just the fact that he doesn't lose top lane. Like, he may not hold his tower. He may not uh, win CS. But you're never going to leave top lane being like, man, I'm now useless as Zach <laughs> because his base skill set is so amazing. Yeah, that slingshot that make that uh, let's bounce so strong to see CC the team, knock them all up, spread them out. And yeah, we're going to see Renekton and Vayne getting picked up. Vayne's been seeing a lot more play lately since that Draven nerf, and it's it's uh, it's pretty strong. Her late game is fairly dominant with that Blade of the Rune King. It's good to see her coming into the scene a little bit more than what she used to do. Well, before it, it was Draven days. Like, How yeah. can you beat Draven? Can Vayne beat Draven early on? No, because <laughs> if you think about what Tumble does, Tumble is like an extra bit of damage on her auto attacks. I think of what Spinning Axes does, which is more extra damage on his auto attacks. Draven just won the early trades before Silver Bolt's got too relevant. So he got nerfed, it's, or changed, but more of a nerf, and it's sad to yeah, see more of a nerf. <laughs> but, you know, I like seeing Vayne play, because Vayne play always has cool tumbles. Like, the good Vaynes that just get out of all danger, it's, it's, it's fun to watch. It's, it's elegant. <laughs> yes, it's, it's like playing a beautiful piano. <laughs> But yeah, there's a lot of chance for outplay coming from Vayne, but her laning phase is fairly weak and we're seeing Caitlyn get picked up to try to counteract that one. The large range doing a lot with that and Nami's Tide Caller Blessing, that E ability, going to be able to apply the attack damage buff and uh, slow with that. And we're going to see Kennen get picked up too. Could go mid, could go top. We'll see where they go with that one while the final picks for Team Summon are getting locked in. Looks like Anivia and Janna, unless they swap it out. This is a pretty solid team. I, I like it. It's protect the Vayne comp, so they're looking for a late game style of play. I mean, if, if Vayne snowballs out of control, she can start dominating as early as mid game or even, mm -hmm. you know, the second lane start roaming if she has a good laning phase. But overall, they have people who can waste time, who can go ahead and de delay anything sort of dangerous and protect Vayne. Like, Anivia can kite, Janet can yeah. knock back, Renekton can just be really annoying and sit there laughing. So all these cool things protect Vayne, just keep her alive. Not necessarily the most traditional thing, like not a, a bunch of, not like a Shen and a Sona and a bunch of AOE CC to keep her alive, but you don't need to keep a Vayne super well protected. She can take care of herself fairly well. Yeah, now that you, uh, you actually mentioned the Anivia for the kiting, they also have now a solid set of Weave Clear for if they need to siege up or uh, defend a turret push which we could see come out from uh, Exerta Seals. Their team is really good at that. They have that uh, Piltover Peacemaker clear. They have Zach to initiate to scare anybody out. And Aatrox, if I'm saying that right, no, no, probably a placeholder. Okay. Well, like, I thought it was going to be Aatrox. Let's ask yep. the important question. Is that Aatrox or is that not Aatrox? 
<laughs> no! No, it's Ari. Damn. Ari, all right. Okay, that's fine. And I'm more of an assassin AP carry we're going to see coming out from there. I thought we'd seen Aatrox put that into the top lane or put it towards mid, but oh well. You can us out with that one. Another A character, though, so either way, it'll be good. I mean, Billy Boss is saying he plays with me in Aatrox. He was last pick. He could change his pick, and <laughs> I I'm not an admin in this tournament, but I will. I, I have executively decided to let that decision fly, so... <laughs> I don't think it would fly. <laughs> I don't think it would fly with the team as much as uh, the admins. <laughs> Yeah, I don't oh. think they would like that one too much. But, yeah, uh, looks like they're going to get back into this one. They think Reap's AFK, but they're going to start it. All right, so we're good. We're going to have, for the side of Team Summon, Vayne, Janna, Anivia, uh, Elise, and Renekton in the top lane. So Jungle Elise, mid Anivia, that bot lane duo of Janna, Vayne. Going to be fairly interesting to see how well they do with that one against uh, Exeter Seal's team of Nami, Caitlyn in the bot lane, Jungle, Zack, Ari in the mid, and I forgot who their top laner was. Top laner? Oh, Zack. Zack. No, no, no. No, that's Jungle, Zack. Um, I am the worst at remembering picks the second they've happened. <laughs> like, uh, immediately after, I forget them all. I just, I, I need those images. But luckily, we can still talk about some of those picks. Question for Anivia yeah. is going to be, or not, Anivia just needs to sit mid lane. She can apply pressure, but she's not much of a roamer. Just kind of sit back farm, kill wraiths, kill wolves, kill anything she can, and just get a ton of extra CS and a ton of moolah out of that. Kennen, that was it. There we go. Alright, so that's going to be interesting. Kennen did get a little bit of a nerf recently, so we'll see how, where he, how well he's going to fare up against that Renekton, who's proven if he gets ahead in the uh, lane or stains fairly even, he is quite the force to be reckoned with. Gets a Sunfire Cape, that Dominant's going to deal percentage damage with the Aura and the Ultimate. Fairly strong, but uh, both these teams have a pretty solid lineup so far. See, now I have to wonder is can Grim Samurai land against a Kennen? Which, you know, no offense to Grim Samurai. He's a, he's actually one of the best Renektons. That's his trademark character, so it's cool to see him on it, but it's it's Kennen. He, if Renekton does, you know, snowball past Kennen, it's awesome for him, but if he doesn't, what does Kennen do? To spam shurikens nonstop, auto attack nonstop, and just be a huge, huge thorn in Renekton's side. Yeah, and that is pretty annoying to get auto attack harassed, especially if they start Doran's Blade. We'll see if he does that one. That's a pretty annoying start for anybody to deal with, especially against Kennen. And yeah, this mid lane is going to be interesting. You're going to see it probably be fairly passive. Reap 22 is going to be in the mid lane with that Anivia going against Kazavrun, who we've seen be a strong mid laner throughout. And yeah, those charms are going to be great CC. And Anivia really can get picked off fairly easily, but she does have the egg to survive, so we'll see if Zack can get some slingshots and force out some summoners early, or uh, if Sicko Scott on that Elise in the jungle is going to be a pain for Kazaroon. And Elise jungle, I think Elise can do a lot mid lane, so that might be one of the prime targets. If Kazaroon has trouble hitting level 6, that's just going to make uh, Reap get an advantage. He can sit mid lane, farm up uh, to his heart's content, and Kazaroon, if he goes for those roams, he's going to be stopped just by the fact that he's doing it later. So I think if Sicko Scott can get a sweet gank on Kazaroon mid lane, that can just do so much for the team. Because on the other hand, you can't really counter jungle a Zac. He's not going to care about anything you do. <laughs> you bot lane, if it's well warded, it, you can still gank a bot lane, even if there are wards down, especially as Elise, because you can do some nifty tricks going over uh, you know, the, the tri-bush wall looking for a gank. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it's it's not something reliable, so it's it's a hard gank. And top lane, it's Kennen. I mean, you don't really gank Kennen. If Kennen's out of position, you kill him, but a long sustained gank is just so hard to pull off on him. Yeah, and I just noticed that Locust took Flash Heal on Janna, so we're going to see that one coming up from him. And uh, on the counterpart, we see Nami with Flash Ignite. So they're trying to deny that a heal out of the bot lane and take it to late game, but... Uh, there's also no exhaust for the side of Exotic Zeal, so that Vayne is going to have pretty much a free roam if she can avoid most of the CC coming out from Exotic Zeal. And there is quite a bit of CC. There is, of course, Cupcakes, which would stop a tumble, uh, the bubble from Nami, the charm from Ari, Kedin, well, his everything, and Zek also his everything. So the CC is numerous, but you're right, they don't have that exhaust, and if you could get Vayne to blow a cleanse on an exhaust, like, it's still a lot to get rid of. Mm -hmm. But I think they kind of they're kind of lagging in that department. If Vayne ever dodges a bubble, for example, they don't have any reliable CC. It's it's it, except Zach, and that's that's all you can really apply. That's what a one second knockup at max rank. That is that is not going to be a lot to hold down with Fujin. Yeah, that's true. Or or they're going to have to um, 
use a lot of spells to get up to them. But we're finally going into that one minute uh, timer delay, and we're going to go into a quick commercial break. Support the sponsors, disable the ad block, support I'm a Power, support Razor Academy, and Fatality Gaming Gear. We'll be right back. Into the loading screen we go, do we have any cool skins? We got, you know, some of the standards, some of the classics. Nothing like a Dragon Slayer vein. No, nothing, nothing it's, too It's, it's average. It's it's the normal vein skin. I mean, you see a lot of vein skins. I'd say Dragon Slayer is the most common. It, it looks okay. It's not creative. I like Black Frost. There. Black Frost and Ivy is awesome. That is, such, that is a cool piece of loading art right there. Yeah, and then uh, we have a seal. Yeah, is there a seal with the Nami? Skin going with that Koi Nami, get Officer Caitlin, Foxfire Nebula, Salt Master Cannon. Now that's a fairly old skin. Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing else too crazy coming out from them. And do you expect any early aggression from either of these teams, though? Now, er early aggression is weird because there's always that possibility, but they could just be going for the ward placement. So if you look at the CC. Janna has a little bit, but she'll probably start shield. Renekton has the 0.75 second CC. Nothing too reliable. But, you know, Elise has a stun. I could very easily see Team Summon going for an invade just because they have one great CC and lots of, honestly, crappy CC that can very easily <laughs> follow it up. Yeah, it could be interesting to see if they do that one. And on the side of Exerticeal, they have a Bubble, Trap, Charm. Uh, Zach, if he wants to start a slingshot or the slow in that Q ability, but I doubt that's going to happen. That would hinder his jungle just a little bit. Um, yeah. That, mm, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's, that's I don't know. legit. I could see an invade just going for the Ari charm. Uh, let's go ahead, get the right overlay going on. We are now in game. Yep, and we do have all the items coming out. Good luck, have funds across the board. And yeah, we're gonna see everybody move down that mid lane. All the items are picked up. Nothing out of the ordinary from that one. A lot of wards for Janna for that bot lane. While Nami has a lot of wards as well. So no pink wards, so no battle of the brushes gonna come out from bot. I'd say one of the more recent picks would be the uh, Dorn Shield of Renekton. Makes sense though, he's gonna need to survive that Kennen harass. Kennen himself starting with the Dorn's Blade. So lots of damage coming out from both sides. And Renekton, well, Kennen's early harass is mostly auto attacks with his 550 range. Uh, there are pings going out onto the blue side. Kennen, uh, Billy Boss, looking in that area, but he might not, he might not find Team Summon. His Team Summon does spot, well, the ready to spot Delight with that ward right over here. Yeah, we just saw a bubble coming out from uh, Delight there, and drops the ward. There are they are spotted up by that ward at the entrance to the mid lane. While everybody might actually walk in onto Kennen right now, as he does get stunned. There is the Q coming out from Anivia. The ignite gets dropped as well. Auto attacks coming out, but a lightning rush getting leveled up very smartly by Billy Boss, and he will just run away from that one and gets a ignite out of that trade, but getting away with his life, so he's happy with that one. A, a really really smart decision from both sides. No one burned a flash there. I think that's instinct, like, oh no, there's danger, but Billy Boss knew that he should be able to survive the damage, which he barely did, and they don't have any more CC anymore. You know, Renekton Stun has a long cooldown at level 1, Anivia's uh, Ice Ball, same deal, it's not going to be up by the time she flashes, so a very, very legit just hold on the flash right there. Still playing it to the very end. Yeah, and we do see a ward at that red buff right now, and I don't think there's going to be any counter jungling towards that one, everybody's going to start fairly safe and it looks like Exerticeal is going to initiate the lane swap so they do not want to go 2v2 against that Vayne Janna. A Vayne Janna, I can see why they wouldn't want to go against that. Vayne has Tumble, a great mechanic to avoid anything Nami can do. 
And generally, if you're in a Nami lane, Nami needs to land the bubble either on the support to get a kill, or the AD carry to fend off their damage. And if Vayne can always tumble out, and Jan is going to be far in the back, just shielding her, you know, it's almost it's almost guaranteed that Vayne will end up winning those trades just because of her higher sustained DPS. Same yeah. time, Renekton, this sucks for Renekton. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen actually a couple 2v1s with Renekton where he can farm fairly well in any turret. He's got that Call of the Meek, he's got that Slice and Dice, he can escape easily. Uh, not easily, but he can escape some of the damage with that. And yeah, it's not going to be easy for him to get any of that CS. He's got that Doran Shield, he's got some HP uh, sustain with that one. But on the side of Kazaroon, I mean Billy Boss, excuse me, in that bot lane as Cannon, he's going to have a little bit of an easier time with the attack range, as you said. Starting the Doran's Blade, giving him a little bit extra AD, and going to be able to. Uh, CS a little bit easier. Of course, Nami right now rocking 63 damage at level 2, much higher than anything Janna could put out right now. That auto attack harass. I, I love a good auto attack harassing support. Unfortunately, Janna just does not have the range for it. Billy Boss, though, taking a decent Ooh. bit of poke down there. Those tumbles. Yeah. And if you notice, Vayne leveled up Silver Bolt second. She didn't go for Condemn because she's not scared of anything right now. So she got the third hit of the proc from Silver Bolt. Takes him down to about half HP. He doesn't have any sustain either coming out. So they might need some jungle pressure down there really quick as Sicko Scott goes up top to defend with his uh, Renekton. So they're going to be able to hold off the push and uh, deny them from being aggressive on any turret. You mentioned jungle pressure, but Zach, he was spotted in the jungle. They knew on Team Summon he could not do anything to help bot lane. And bot lane, just look at it, they're going uh, aggressive. I thought I saw a tumble forward. <laughs> Billy Boss, though, now level 3, still has that lightning rush. Should be able to survive any incoming damage, but no, the tower's taking a lot of damage. Yeah, and there is Greed coming in. Gonna eat a lot of damage. Gets condemned into the wall, gets the Silver Ball proc, gets taken to below half HP. He is not gonna be happy with that, but has his double buff, has his passive, he's perfectly fine. And yeah, Sickle Scott's been sitting up top quite a long time right now, using his uh, double buff advantage to help Grim Samurai push out the top lane. Gonna throw up that Spider Link, gonna connect, do a little bit of damage to Swinging Soul, but he'll be fine. And yeah, just uh, nothing crazy coming out just yet from either of these teams. Well, I, I love the play from Sicko Scott. I love that new strategy where teams will just push the 2v2, a 2v1 lane into a 2v2 because this gives a chance for Grim's Hammer to get decent experience. He can go back to base now, and if you look at top turret's HP, it's down about, what, 106 damage? Compare that to the other side where it's going to be you know, down to 1,000 already. So that, that damage transition is huge. It's actually Kaz are taking a lot of damage mid lane. Yeah, there was an Ignite being traded right there. The charm does not connect. Reef is going to go in with the auto attacks. One more gets it! Reap gets first blood in that 1v1 against Kazarune on that Ari as a Nivea. So good job. He didn't even burn Flash. So he is going to be very pleased with that one. And please, he shouldn't be. You know, it's it sells 1v1 kills and Reap playing a Nivea. She has a lot of burst damage that people always seem to underestimate. Mostly because you need to be chilled. You need to be hitting both parts of the Flash Frost. There are so many different skills that can just go wrong with the Nivea. And because of that, that's why she's not considered the most kill, uh, killable mid. It's hard to actually get a kill with her. Mm, yeah, and if you notice, she didn't level up wall either, so she's just got Flash Frost and Frostbite leveled up. Frostbite leveled up to level 3, and yeah, she just completely decimated him in that trade, especially with the charm not connecting. So, good job to him. But, um, yeah, she picked up tier now. She's got a Ruby Crystal, gonna most likely build that into a uh, Catalyst, maybe go for Bond of Ages, or go for uh, stacking up that tier first and Serafi's Embrace to the late game. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not seeing any of the old Frog and Sal and Nivea build, which is just throw a dart and pick something random, but it's, <laughs> it's all about the mana. The mana and a little bit of tankiness, as Locust takes a lot of damage from Greed in the bot lane. That Zac first, even if it's just jungle Zac with only Machete, can chunk down a Janna very, very quickly. But, you know, it's, it's, it's trades working in favor of Team Summon. They're pushing in bot, they got the kill mid. You know, Billy Boss now top lane, under level because of how they play the jungle roaming, and... It's just a slight advantage that can very easily snowball now for Team Summon. Yeah, and if you notice, Vayne is 52 CS to the 42. That is going to be going up a little bit since she's underneath turret. But 52 to 44 at this point, and ahead of the Caitlyn, who was 2v1 against Renekton. And you saw the pressure of Sicko Scott. It completely denied Swinging Salt's objective to keep pushing and getting as much CS, as well as denying CS from Grim Samurai, who is ahead of Kennen at this point, even if by a little, but still ahead. He's ahead, but he also got a lot of experience. He also had a chance to share the experience and share CS with uh, Elise, so mm -hmm. that affects his CS negatively, and he's still coming out a little bit. You know, now 0-0, zero to zero, and there's actually another lane swap going on. They just want to wreck Billy Boss, I think. 
They're, they're, they did a good job before, <laughs> the tower's still alive, bomb, but they just want to chunk down turrets and 2v1s, that's set up for it. Yeah, and D-Light just landing a nice bubble on the Grim Samurai through that slice and dice, maybe a little bit of harass on him, and now they're going to go back to what they originally planned to do, which is pushing that bot lane and pushing the tower 2v1, but Grim Samurai is level 6 now, and could potentially look to get some help from a jungler and possibly try to get a kill. Any he cold the meek, that cold the meek right there barely touched. Uh, swing salt, but the damage on it is is quite quite high. Uh, Cold the meek level just base damage in general. It's it's hard to compete with, especially if he has that rage bonus going for him. So it's it's dangerous bot lane. It's it's very possible for Renekton, and actually Kennen has the same deal of top lane for them to get kills post six. So Billy Boss down level six, Grim Samurai now level six. That kill potential has just grown yeah. for both lanes. There it is. The dominance coming out. There is the repel from Swing uh, from Sicko Scott as they do force the flash from Swinging Salt, but the flash call the meek from Grim Samurai is gonna pick that one up. D-Light is their next target, gonna use his passive to give him the extra speed, heal himself up, gives himself the Tie Collar Blessing, but is not gonna be pursued, and just as I said it, Grim Samurai gets that pressure from Sicko Scott, and they get the kill. And that's how the 2v1 could work when you get that slight advantage. It's it's weird time bombs for both sides, as Greed goes forward, trying to clear the wave, Sicko Scott missing a stun. I'm not sure if they could get that kill, especially with Zack's passive, but they sure, yeah. they could have proc'd it for sure, and Nami really can't do much to defend him at this point. Yep, he's just there to clear out the wave and eat up as much XP that he can. While up top, we do have Waste Fusion and Locust pressuring Billy Boss still. And Billy Boss is still behind in CS from Grim Samurai, who now has a kill on himself, so they are going to be content with that outcome overall across the map. While it is a 2-0 kill lead for uh, Team Summon. Well, Ex Exertus has a problem with Kazuru and dying in the mid lane uh, earlier uh -oh. on. Has a fight going on now, who's going to win this? There's the dash coming out as well. Nice flash from Reap to dodge the third hit. Both Ignites were popped in that one. Reap still having that passive is going to be okay. And yeah, just forcing out uh, the Ignite from Kazarun, who doesn't have his flash up just yet. Going to be coming up in a few seconds as it just pops right now. And yeah, Kazarun getting forced back, but Reap is going to keep pushing with that Glacial Storm. Unfortunately for Reap, he ran out of mana, Nivea's mana uh, drain, even with blue buff, just a bit too much. Same thing for Kazarun, they just both want Uma's extra Grim Samurai looking for the kill one more time. Flashes are down, Cocoon connects, there's the spider as well, a bubble on the Grim Samurai, gonna keep him up in the air, but a tidal wave gets popped too, a Ignite drop from D-Light, but the snipe is not gonna connect, Grim Samurai eats that one for his friend, and D-Light gets out of there with a good play, and a good bubble with tidal wave. An excellent, excellent disengage from D-Light right there, most people would have gone back, but he actually went for the, just the closest escape route, he knew he was cornered, he knew he was pinned down, it didn't matter what direction he went as long as he was going away, and just the right amount of CC. And once again, Slice and Dice having such a long cooldown earlier on, just Renekton in general, everything's got a long cooldown except for Cold Amik. Once he uh, dashed in, there goes all the chase potential once Nami escapes his melee range. Yeah, and a really good play from d to survive through that one, knowing that he could uh, flash away, and having that flash up still after that last fight too, so... Good job by him. And yeah, Broom Samurai Sicko Scott have been putting in a lot of work in this 2v1. And Renekton, as I said earlier on when they picked it, 2v1ing, not as hard as uh, you would think it is for him. He's got that call to meet to heal up and sustain through that. He even built up a Doran Shield too, as well as having 1400 gold in his bank. So we could see a giant spell coming out from him while Sicko Scott sneaks into that bot bush. I mean, this would, this would be a huge kill. If Swinging Salt, if can't do anything. If they just shut every, everybody down, including Kenan with that CS disadvantage, which is actually evened out by now, you know, Caitlyn's really important to this team since Ari's kind of been held back. So if she doesn't have that sustained DPS, they'll just crush them. It's the light now. Yep, there goes the cocoon. There's the dominance pop. Cole the meat gonna pick up that kill. Repel saying that he's not done right now, but a net from Swinging Salt will push him back and say, get out of my face. And now we can potentially see the tier one turret in the bot lane fall as Swinging Salt is the only one left to defend that one. I'm getting scared right now for Exertus. They need a mid game. They need someone that they can just say, this is the character that does really well at the 15 minute mark, at the 17 minute mark, once people start hitting level 10, level 11. I don't have that character right now. Kazarun is level 9, but he's, he doesn't have a CS advantage. Mm -hmm. Nivea level 10 has a, a, quite an advantage right now. And the thing with the Nivea is, she can just kind of put this barrier that prevents anybody from helping Kazarun if he ever goes forward. And they don't have anybody right now to get past that. Uh, Kennen will get stopped by a wall, they do have Greed that can go forward himself, but if he doesn't have any backup, it's not going to be enough. Dragon is being attempted though, this could be the chance for Exertus to make their big play. Yep, this is going to be a 4v3 at this point, Charm connects on the read, Tidal Wave comes out, but Sicko Scott going to smite that dragon, gets it for himself, Repel back onto Kazarun, dodges the Q, 
Gonna get a cocoon to stop Swinging Salt, but Flash lets bounce from X, uh, from Greed is gonna come out. Auto attack from Swinging Salt, gonna pick that one up. They do lose Dragon, they do get a top turret, but there's the final hour they're gonna chase after Billy Boss. Nope, looks like they can let him Lightning Rush away. And do you get a tower and Dragon just for one death and are gonna be content? I mean, huge, huge things all around. More Dragon Gold, of course, uh, than the kill gained by Exertus. And Billy Boss losing his Flash, that, that's such a massive disadvantage for Kennen at this point. He doesn't have a way to reliably get into a fight. Now they're relying on either the Lightning Surge forward, which Vayne can always condemn out, or Janna can always ult out. And at that point, Billy Boss is done. Or they're relying on something like a landed charm or a landed bubble, which is, mm -hmm. is not consistent. They don't have any guaranteed initiation. Yeah, those skill shots aren't the easiest to hit, but there's a wall. Ooh, a good bubble to slice and dice and knocks, uh, keeps him in the air for 1.5 seconds. Uh, just denies him from going in, but the red buff actually might get stole by Wood... Wiz Fusion and Locus at this point. Looks like there's gonna be a ward over the wall. They're gonna see him doing it. He charges up the slingshot. Does hit both of them. A lot of damage coming up from that one. Condemn from Wiz Fusion gonna deny him. Does get the red buff. Does get the third hit from Silver Bolts. But there's Billy Boss coming in. Has that slicing maelstrom active. Sicko Scott there draws out a cocoon, hoping that they were chasing, but nice stop from Exerta Seal, but a good steal from Team Summon to get that red buff for Wiz Fusion. I mean, no flash, no chance for Billy Boss to do a damn thing in that fight. But I mean, this this is the problem. L look at Vayne, she got the red buff and then what happened? Did she take any real damage? You know, got kinda low when Billy Boss finally got in there, but just nothing to shut her down. Catherine, of course, did not have his ultimate up. That's gonna be possibly the big saving grace, but with Fujin, you know, 125 CS, 0, 0, 0, but there are two turrets down benefiting him. Mm -hmm. He's he's loaded right now. Let's check his gold out. He's at 4,670, uh, a whopping 700 in front of Caitlyn, which, wow. considering that she has the team's only kill, that's quite a lead. That is quite the big lead. And we see the Blade of the Rune King is finished and picked up. Get some extra potions from that one. And going to build up towards that uh, Phantom Dancer second, most likely, and get as much attack speed as possible. And if we notice the gold from Caitlyn, she said before it was 4,000. She does have that BF sword and that pickaxe. So going for an infinity dance rush, unless she goes for some kind of uh, uh, last whisper bloodthirster combination. We'll see if she mixes us, mixes us up with that one. And yeah, right now, no one can dual vein. That blade of, that blood, blade of the Rune King is too strong. Yeah. The B-O-R-T-K, you know, you oh, see it in action. <laughs> the bot rook. It's just, it's just going to stop any sort of chase. Zack, if he goes in with the slingshot, she'll tumble away. Might get hit by Let's Bounce, but in the end, she has so many ways to, to stop the engage. They need to land a hard CC, which is either a bubble, which is so difficult to land from range, or Kazarun has to go in for the charm, which is actually, it's a lot more reliable. Tumble can escape it, but compared to other CC, charm is actually relatively easy to land, and that's because mm -hmm. bubble is just so damn hard. But still, I yeah. think it's it's going to come a lot uh, down to Kazaroon or just catching enemies out of position. You know, if you catch Reap or Grim Samurai, that does shut a lot down for uh, with Putin and the rest of Team Summon. Yeah, we usually see Ari's build for that Deathfire's Grasp to try to give anybody that they can or dish out the most damage with the extra uh, percentage damage that Deathfire's Grasp adds from the active. But it looks like he's going for more a... Uh, of a sustainy kind of build with that chalice, gonna build in Athenes and Holy Grail most likely, as the battle for the Pink Wars goes down in the mid lane, but it looks like Nami gonna win that one while Grim Samurai gets initiated on, does get a slice and dice out of there, and the ward battle was lost. Reap losing a Pink Ward in that mid lane, unfortunately, but do you like picking that one up? Now they have vision in the middle of the lane, and the tier two is being pressured by Grim Samurai, and then up top, the tier two for Locus and Wizfujin is being is pressured for uh, Swinging Salt. So we can still getting his own pressure, actually. The final hour comes out, not much comes from it, as a tidal wave does kind of stop that uh, initiation right in the buds. Still, and though. look at Grim Samurai. It's going it's... in on the Billy Boss. The Ignite is down, the Dominus is active, the stun comes out from the Shuriken, and he just gives up. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't care. That's the funny thing, is Grim Samurai actually putting out his own laugh. It's like, all right, you, you stopped my engagement. I didn't kill you, but I get to deny all this CS. I get to push in that bottom turret, apply a little bit more pressure, and just across the map, Kazarun getting hit by a wall. Uh, nothing comes from it though, could have caught him out, could have gone for the DPS. They're just applying constant pressure, constant aggression, constant annoyance, and well, how is Exodus playing this? They're at their turrets, they're not fighting back, they're not going to get a chance to initiate or to gank, and they're, they're losing CS, they're ever so slowly losing HP on the turrets, and they're falling behind. Yeah, and still currently a two turret lead for the side of Team Summon, so they're just going to take away with that one. They have a dragon under the belt as well, so they have timers on that one. Going to be back up at 1746 in another minute. Uh, they 
the most likely motion on going towards that one and having complete control with the wards. While we do have Grim Samurai still split pushing against Billy Boss, has that Sunfire Escape, gonna go in with Slice and Dice, just poke and prod, heals up with that call to make just a little bit. And yeah, just gonna keep split pushing this lane away while his fusion goes 1v1 against uh, Swinging Salt up top. Gonna have a three man push on this mid turret for Reap. Now, Swinging Soul, he's, he's in a precarious position. If he pushes out a little bit too far, a little bit too forward, you know, Vayne will chase him down and kill him. You know, the Caliber Net's a great escape. The thing is, Vayne, she can just keep tumbling after it hits. Doesn't really matter to her. Two second cooldown on tumble. It's, uh, it's pretty nifty. So, in the end, if Vayne can't ever leave her tower, and it's just kind of wasting Vayne's potential and also letting his fusion get some more free CS. As finally, the constant tower pressure has finally been broken out. Mid tower down to about 100 HP. Can Zach save it? I think he just can. Yep, and he will be able to. As it is going to sit fairly low, though. They could see one more final push from Team Summit. It's just press that one down and look to secure. Most likely dragging control as it did just pop up on the minimap. We're going to have everybody look to motion over there and ward everything up that they can. Where's Fuji going to go back? He's got a... Uh... 1200 gold in his inventory. You could see the zeal picked up as the pink ward counter wars have begun. We do see Kezarun looking to maybe get a charm. There are wards over there as well. Locust and Psycho Scott sitting mid. And yeah, a little scouting coming out from Grim Samurai. That's, that's three pink wards that have just been dropped. One was killed, two in favor of Exerted Zeal. And yeah, it's going to be taken out fairly soon as Locust goes over with his own pinks. Now realize every pink ward that goes down is huge for Exerted because Janna. She has a global gold. There are three turrets down in her favor. She has more money to play with. And in the end, what are, what are her items? Just a side stone. But that's kind of how Locust plays. Is Billy Boss actually getting caught up by the Renekton? Yep, the stun does come out. Looks like Reap's going to sound out. Zack right there. Locust actually is going to get initiated on. Flashes away from the charm. Kazarun does blow the ultimate. Has one more dash on it. But not going to pick anybody else off with that. As now we see Team Summon collapsing in on this one. Could potentially be a 4v4 if they do want to go for that. But Wiz Fusion trying to stick away those golems from Swing and Salt. Does walk into a trap, get revealed. And now we have Dragon being started for the side of Team Summon. Almost, almost for in a sense, but Vayne isn't there. That is the bulk of the team. Uh, oh, Wiz she stole Lincoln. blue with Tornado! Locust still blue with that Tornado. A beautiful wall coming out with Reef. Gonna keep... Billy Boss in there, Green is going to go in, Let's Bounce comes out, Grim Samurai going in, no fear, there's the Janna Shield coming out, he's going to flash in with the Dominus, goes in with the Call of the Meek, takes down a double kill, going to try to get a triple kill with the Zac passive being popped, they don't lose anybody, Monsoon being popped to heal up, and the triple kill for Green and Samurai, after the Dragon Ball, which Fujin goes in, does a condemn, Gets the auto attack, one more, barrier gets popped, Silverbolt, Proc will take that kill, which Fujin picks it up, and a 5 for none ace, and now Baron. Locust with that blue buff, I just want to say something, that blue buff actually huge on Locust for the Baron itself because you'll have constant shield being spammed out on the Grim Samurai and this is, that was just one quick engagement, one quick death. Once the fight actually started, the team fight potential coming out with this Reap so powerful right now, Grim Samurai so powerful, nothing could stop them. You know, Ari has decent damage but across the team, you know, Billy Boss didn't have the survivability, didn't have that Zonia's, Greed couldn't do much himself and the, the quick ace came out. And of course Vayne, once Vayne goes on Caitlyn, Caitlyn does not get away. There, there is almost nothing Caitlyn can do to get away if there's a good distance to travel because what does Vayne do? She just chases you down with increased move speed and can just tumble through any sort of damage you can put out. You put a trap down, she can walk around and tumble forward. You put a net onto her, she can just tumble forward, not care about the slow. <laughs> yeah. And just overall, very, very strong play coming out. So oh, Vayne probably... Summon. Yeah, Hell could tumble... Uh, Vayne could tumble to the left or the right to try to even dodge the net if she wants to. But yeah, when we see Red Buff get passed on to Swinging Salt, and yeah, he's got that Infinity Edge finish, building towards a Zeal, but now there's a fully built Phantom Dancer on the side of Vayne with that Blade of the Rune King, so she is a force to be reckoned with at this point. And yeah, we just saw her 1v1 Caitlyn. Caitlyn couldn't do much, and we'll see if Exodus Zeal can pick it up in the next team fight, as they are still down by about 9,000 gold. So it, it grew a, a lot of, in the past couple minutes. A bit of, of a climb. Yeah. A bit of a climb. If I had a gold chart, it would uh, get pretty uh, pretty big very recently. <laughs> and that's because, well, the team fight is just better right now for a team summon. They have the gold lead on the right people. They have lots of CC, lots of, I'd say, more reliable CC. Those bubbles aren't consistent. The charm is about as consistent as the Elise stun. And, you know, <laughs> Anivia slows, Anivia's walls, Anivia, it's, it's hard to mess those up. And, of course, Renekton with his, uh, his own stun which Billy Boss has just been having trouble with this entire game. Yeah, and 
Um, we're gonna see if they do try to push in on this one. There was that um, Archangel Staff finished by Reap on that Anivia, so he's gonna be stacking that one up. Looks like he's at 464 of the 750 on the stacks. Gonna get that one stacked up in about a few minutes if he does keep spamming his abilities. And now we're seeing a Baron up Team Summon pressuring a Tier 2 middle and a Tier 2 top and a Tier 2 bot. So they're split pushing very dominantly and not afraid. I guess the question is, what's going to happen in the solo lanes? All right, you send, say, Ari top lane. Vayne can kill her. Vayne can just kind of dodge everything one more time. Ari can get away, but in the end, they still lose a tower as it actually just goes down naturally to the Vayne not having any competition. <laughs> yeah. uh, bot lane, is Kennen killing Renekton? Hell no. That oh. ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> He's just laughing in his face, doing that Renekton laugh, just spamming it up there. A um, little bit of manner coming out, kind of slicing nice in, scared Billy Boss away. And yeah, Wiz Fuji's been pushing top by himself this entire time. We might actually see some response to it now as Ari and Nami head up there. Flash Frost connects from Reap on X onto uh, Greed, and this mid tier 2 is probably going to fall right now. There's a lot of damage going on to it. As somebody auto attacks, going to fall, going to go down, and we're going to have Team Summon taking a five turret lead at 22 minutes and one more time it was just three turrets bop 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 going down so quickly and they just, they just can't handle the pressure they can't handle the duels they can't handle the even smaller skirmishes with a 3v3 and just even underneath a tower that was probably their only chance to fight now exertus where do they fight when do they fight they're going to keep split pushing on team summon and i think at this point you know this, this might be a slow death sentence they cannot fight them back anymore yeah we could see um Team Summon just dragging this one out. They do have that Baron still up for just a little while, about another 40 seconds-ish or so, while Grim Samurai just puts the pressure on bot. Wispujin keeps pushing the pressure on top. They have that Anivia shove with the Glacial Storm and the spam with the abilities as well. She has a lot of mana regen coming out. Wispujin taking down that top turret to about half HP by himself. Swinging Salt actually getting really aggressive. The crit comes out and the tumble, but it does get stopped by the net. And now there's the push coming out from Nivea. Just leaves the Glacial Storm active, has that blue buff, has the Archangels, lots of mana regen, Flash Frost. Gonna connect actually with Greed. And yeah, just very, very good split push from Team Summon. Yep, the Baron buff did just fall off of Team Summon, so we are going to see them still pushing. They don't care that Baron's off. They're still ahead by about 11.4k. The Knight goes down to Billy Boss. Dominance is pop. Slicing Maelstrom in response. Stun comes out. Grim Samurai eating a little bit too many tower hits. Still slicing dice out, but looks to keep going back in. Flash done to call the Meek. Gets the kill. Grim Samurai is dominating right now. And now we see Team Summon pushing mid. Charm doesn't connect. Top tower fall. I mean, bot tower falls. Excuse me, the bot tier too. While Inhibitor is being pressured... Uh, by uh, Team Summon for the side of Exertus. <laughs> Red Team's turret has been destroyed. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> there's the snipe coming out. They're looking to go in. One last hurrah for Xardis. Tidal Wave hits just Janna. They're going to go in, try to pick off Locust. Charm doesn't connect, but a good Monsoon comes out, knocking everybody out. The net, the heal, all the auto attacks. And it looks like Swinging Salt picks that one up for himself. The Slate Shot gets charged once again. Reap walks back into it, but a wall blocking everybody off. Glacial Storm and Prince just completely melt that poor innocent Zack. The Bloblets get taken out by Sigo Scott. Looks like he actually smited him for some style points. Sicko Scott picks up that one, while Grim Samurai gets targeted down by Billy Boss, but I don't think they want to fight that. Sicko Scott goes in, crits come out, auto attacks, everything. While Grim Samurai does get a nade, auto attacks come out, the stun doesn't last too long, Merc Tread's being too strong, but the flash over the wall, Billy Boss, are you gonna get this kill? There's the Shuriken, shut down, plus 500 gold from that spree that he had. And yeah, now two open inhibitors in top and mid. Well, this fight might be over. They pop the egg from Reap, they're going back in, the Flash Frost doesn't connect, they can't keep following that one, even with Wiz Fujin on that vein. So, yeah, no egg at least, I guess.
You're muted. Yep. What? What the heck? <laughs> I did not press that button. That is weird to do. OBS, why are you doing this to me? But still. Well all that good analysis for nothing. <laughs> well, it's okay, but if you think about it, what's been going on? We've had the three uh, fights going on across the map the entire time. What did they finally lose by the time they've been punished for their overextension? They lost a kill. They lost two deaths, I believe. Give up the Anivia Egg, a few cooldowns, nothing big, but they got so many towers. The inhibitors are all naked right now, just their butts flapping in the wind, and it's going to be so easy for them to pressure them and take them out. They can split push some more. They're still good at it. They still have... You know, their amazing 1v1 potential on Bane, on Renekton, and now they'll have their HP and summoners back up if they wait it, wait it out. Yep, last time, we see well, well, it's like last time Whitegrim died because he had no HP from his earlier engagement and he didn't have his spells up. Yeah, and he went back to buy and he has a Spirit Versage, Radiance, and that Sunfire Cape from earlier on in this game. So he is a tanking monster. So, yeah, nothing, nothing too good gonna come out when that Renekton gets that fed. We have Contestation for the blue buff. Let's see if they can pick it up. And it looks like the Aerotoxin with Smite picks that one up for Psycho Scout. They seal it away. And Wiz Fusion with Locus still still pushing that top lane. There are pings in mid, showing that everybody is there. It's like shot on the wall from Greed. While Team Summon tries to collapse on this one, they look like they're all five going up top right now. They might try to go into Vayne. I think they have to. It's a rat race for the top lane as everybody's trying to head up there. But Tornado comes out, you know, Kenan without his flash, he used it for the killer here. And they needed that now for the pain as... <laughs> What? Wow, it's still stunned even get, through the slingshot. Get out of there, Greed. You're, you're, you do not belong on that part of the map. Wiz Fujin showing his dominance. And now Top's being pushed on, mid's being pushed on. Where does Exertus fight? They, it doesn't look like they're gonna try. Actually, there's the slingshot. There's the slicing mail from Slicker Scott. Can't repel. He gets stunned through it. There's the repel. Grim Samurai right in the middle. Everybody dominates doing so much damage. Reef coming in. Gets the killing spree on Anami. Wiz Fujin finishes off that RA. Looks like he's gonna get the triple kill. Oh, nope. Give it to Anivia. He does get a triple kill and the end from the red buff actually. Thought they were gonna go to Reef, but that's gonna be GG. It looks like Team Summit is gonna take it over Exerted Zeal for the first game of the Mobile Fire Champion Series. Challenger Fif Series, excuse me. 15 to 3. I, I wanna give you some perspective on 15 to 3. Every single time Exerted's got a kill, they got aced in response, essentially. And actually, one time they did get aced. So th this game, it was just a crush from Team Summon. They took the early control. Their lanes just just worked. It was a lot of it, going to be honest, with just that early pressure coming out from at least top lane. You know, where was Zach early on? He did not help out the, the 1v2 lane. As a result, the 1v2 lane got pressure, got pushed, and Renekton just had a field day. Yep, and uh, double Phantom Dancer for was Fujin on that vein. So, pretty pretty good. Lots of attack speed coming out at that point. It didn't really matter. He was 4-0-2, doing a good job with that. And, yeah, it just looks like um, Exodus Yield couldn't get any traction. They fell way too far behind early. The towers kept falling down. But, overall, good game, and Team Summon takes it over Exodus. 29-minute win. Sub-30. A very fast game. A very good time. We'll be back in a few minutes.